Hello and welcome to my presentation on black carbon and nitrogen ratios. This presentation will focus on open access data from two air quality monitoring stations in the United Kingdom. These ratios can be used to discover hidden secondary sources of combustion related air pollution, normally inconspicuous on single pollutant polar plots. These principles could be used at any monitoring station which monitors NO2, VC, wind direction and wind speed. The computer package used for this analysis is OpenAir, developed by Cars Law. I'll be discussing this in more depth on the following slides. Just a quick note on my credentials, I'm a doctoral researcher at the University of Strathclyde, with my thesis is focused on air quality implications of developing the United Kingdom's unconventional petroleum resources, with a focus on geological drilling and other analogous environments. Though, in light of restricted site access, my thesis has delved into possible monitoring techniques which could be used in complicated industrial settings. I'm sure most of you are aware of what black carbon, i.e. BC, and nitrogen dioxide, i.e. NO2, are. So I'll not spend much time on this. However, for clarity, BC is essentially very fine soot particles, about the 24th the width of the human hair, i.e. PM2.5, comprised of elemental carbon often coated by an outer layer of polyaromatic hydrocarbons, PAH. Nitrogen dioxide, on the other hand, is a gaseous compound of nitrogen produced by fire, or at very high temperature environments, such as volcanic eruptions, and in large quantities in forest fires, as per recently on the west coast of the USA. In urban locations, NO2 is mostly produced through anthropogenic means, such as burning fuel in vehicles, heating and cooking, though some regional uh, sources can be important. This research, a chapter of my PhD, uses an OpenWIS statistical computing program called R. R is a programming language like Python, and when combined with the R Studio platform, it allows for a graphical interface as shown in the figure. The toolset OpenAir contains many data analysis methods, including bivariate polar plots and conditional probability functions, or CPF. Once the data is loaded into the program, which can be a temperamental process, the program allows for a series of complicated mathematical models to be run on the user's data without the need to code from scratch. Open Air was created by Dr. David Carslaw and has been used to evaluate air pollution in major UK cities, including London, Glasgow and Cardiff, as well as infrastructure projects, including aircraft emissions from Heathrow Airport. This work uses an interesting ratio between BC and NO2, though these principles work equally well to other oxides of nitrogen. The ratio is interesting as several points could be conjectured about the ratio. Firstly, sources of BC mainly stem from industrial processes, fires, vehicles, and from the resuspension of these sources. Whilst NO2 is produced in much higher quantities from these sources and from other things, which are common in cities like cooking and heating. In this way, the NO2 concentration far exceeds the BC concentration. For example, in the middle of the city of Glasgow, there's a very busy road called Hope Street. Along this road, the BC to NO2 ratio is 10.57%, which was similar to a fracking site in Poland, which had a ratio of roughly 10% BC to NO2, mainly from diesel industrial generators. NO2 is, however, more susceptible to degradation as it can quickly break down in the presence of sunlight and can diminish into background ambient air. So finally, where there is a proportionally more NO2 locally, it can be assumed that sources of nitrogen are close by, whereas BC, a more pervasive air pollutant, may signify dirty air pollution sources or, resus or resuspended background pollution. The data was downloaded from the UK Air Selector website from the Glasgow High Street and Townhead monitoring stations, which will be covered in more detail on the following slides. The data was available in a CSV format from the 7th of October 2012 to the 1st of March 2019, when I began the analysis. The data included data flags for QAQC, as well as the levels of BC, NO2, wind speed and the wind direction heading. Information on the monitoring stations are available from DEFRA, however in short the BC measurement is taken using a McGee etholometer model AE33, whilst an API 200A chemiluminescence analyzer is used for NO2. The monitoring stations were held to several international standards including EN142112012, EN164502017 and MSERTs.
Together, Town Head and High Street both listed 47,211 lines of hourly data. However, some of this data is of variable quality, with some data entries being missing, partially recovered or, well, absurd, such as negative values or values in the tens of thousands. Fortunately, there was a data flag series which allowed for no data recovery and data of questionable quality to be screened out of the series. Any line where the wind speed, wind direction, NO2 or BC concentration were missing or questionable were deleted. This led to 20,232 lines of data, about half of the series being deleted at High Street and only 4,684 lines at Town Head. One might think that this is problematic, however High Street was installed 477 days later than Town Head, which accounted for 11,448 hours of blank data. High Street was also more prone to mechanical breakdowns since installation as the site was recycled from an older monitoring station within the city. Still, 20,000 lines of good quality data was more than enough for this analysis. One of the monitoring stations chosen for this analysis was Glasgow High Street. The High Street monitoring station is located next to the road A8, a major thoroughfare through the city, which leads from the south side of the city towards the M8 motorway. The monitoring station backs onto the university housing to the east and west, townhouses and shops to the south, and to the north there is a lecture hall, Glasgow Cathedral and the Royal Infirmary Hospital. So with all the preamble done, let's look at some charts. The charts presented here are two single element bivariate polar plots of NO2 on the left and BC on the right. These charts show the highest concentrations of air pollution recorded where wind speeds were below 2 metres per second and blue from the north. Though a large elliptical increase in NO2 concentrations was present when winds blew from the northwest at wind speeds up to 6 to 8 metres per second. Generally though, the higher the wind speed, the less concentration of air pollution was recorded. Looking now at ratio pollution polar plots with ratios on the left and CPF plots on the right, there were four main features of note on these charts. These were hotspot 1, Northerly winds, especially from the northeast, have brought high ratios of nitrogen to BC, with probability approaching 100%. These winds led to ratios of around 70 to 1 NO2 to BC. Hotspot 2, down here, uh, had a more moderate source of NO2 with a 70% probability, which came from south southeasterly winds at high wind speeds above 4 meters per second. These winds led to concentrations of around 50 to 1. NO2 to BC. Besides hot spots, there were also two cold spots where concentrations of BC were high compared to nitrogen species. These areas had a probability of high ratios, 75th percentile approaching 0%. Cold spot 3 had high wind speeds from the south to southeast, which led to concentrations of around 20 to 1 NO2 to BC. And finally, hot spot 4, cold spot 4, I should say had high wind speeds from the southwest, which led to concentrations of 10 to 1 NO2 to BC. As were noted on the ratio of polar plots, two of these had a high relative concentration of BC to NO2, whilst the other two features had low ratios, i.e. cold spots. By using back trajectory analysis, several sources were conjectured. These sources included hotspot 1, which dominated the ratios from the northeast, this was likely due to the impact of local air pollution from the A8 High Street, combined with heavy traffic located at the intersection between Cathedral Street and the A8. The reason for the low relative BC ratio may have been due to the mitigative role of vegetation in gardens here and also down here as well. Whilst NO2 seems to have been less impacted by turbulent mixing or degradation, possibly by following the, more, uh, the roadway more directly. Hotspot 2, the long feature from the southeast, may be installed from the busy Duke Street multi-storey car park, which has uh, 1,170 spaces. Notably, the building had large portal openings with an indirect line of sight to the monitoring station via an alleyway. Feature 3 was a cold spot with a relative uh, with a high relative BC concentration to NO2. This may have been due to a BC rich source. The conjectured source of BC Rich Air was the Well Park Brewery down here, which is pictured looking down from this hill. 
This source emits as much as uh, 1,242 tonnes of BC annually, according to their emissions log. Odorous pollution is also an anecdotal brewery related pollutant in this area. Finally, Cold Spot 4 was conjectured to be due to a uh, local street canyon effect uh, within the Glasgow High Street enclosed area, just to the south of the monitoring station, with the ratio of BC to NO2 was 10 to 1, and was similar to ratios at Hope Street, another well known street canyon. Glasgow Town Head, pictured here, looking north, was the other monitoring station chosen for analysis. Separately to High Street, this monitoring station monitors the urban background air pollution within this part of the city of Glasgow. The site itself is sited immediately to the east, west and south of a flat recreational park, whilst a local shopping cluster and car park is present to the north. Within 100 metres in all directions are mostly residential buildings, although there is a university campus and a large bus station to the west. Similar to at High Street, the single pollutant polar plots at Town Head are presented here with NO2 to the left and BC to the right. The highest concentration of BC and NO2 were found at very low wind speeds, below 2 metres per second. The NO2 and BC bivariate polar plots had a bullseye distribution, with moderate to high concentrations up to 35 micrograms per cubic metre for NO2 in most wind directions, below 2 metres per second. There were patterns emerging at low to moderate concentrations here though these were poorly resolved. The distribution of BC was similar to NO2 in that the highest concentrations of two micrograms per meter cubed uh, were found below three meters per second. High wind speeds above 10 meters per second, however, led to much more drastic uh, declines in BC concentrations than per NO2. The BC to NO2 ratio of bivariate polar plots at Townhead are shown to the left, and the CPF shown, uh, plot is shown to the right. Similarities between the air pollutants are clearer than with the single pollutant plot alone, and new potential sources of air pollution could be identified. There were four main features of note on the CPF and ratio polar plots. Hotspot one comes from the southwesterly and to northwest northerly winds, rich in NO2 at most wind speeds, with a CPF probability of 60 to 70 percent. The pattern is enhanced with CPF and shows a Triliskian shape. Hotspot two. There is a NO2 rich anomaly to the east northeast at high wind speeds above 5 meters per second. The anomaly was especially rich in NO2 to BC, accounting for a ratio of 110 to 1. The feature also had a 70% CPF probability. Hotspot 3 shows a Z-shaped feature, which appeared on the NO2 to BC plot. The resolution improved with CPF. The Z-shaped feature extends into an F-shape here, with winds from the southeast to southwest, a ratio of 50 to 1 NO2 to BC. There are a series of colder spots associated with this, with ratios as low as 30 to 40 to 1 NO2 to BC. Hotspot 4, or I should say cold spot, is, comes from the southwest at high wind speeds with a ratio of around 40 to 1 NO2 to BC. There was a CPF probability below 10%, showing a consistent source of nitrogen poor and BC rich air. Four features were noted on the ratio of polar plots. Three of these had a high relative concentration of NO2 to BC. These features included hotspot one, which had that interesting Triliskian shape, uh, was likely sourced from several major roads, including North Hanover Street, Cowcaddon Street, the 804, and their intersections here, here, and here. Potentially, there may have also been some minor contribution from an industrial estate to the north and the M8 motorway, um, which is quite some distance away. Hotspot 2 likely came from uh, the 197 vehicles which used the town head interchange daily. However, despite the high traffic count, it was good to see that this source only impacted the monitoring station at very high wind speeds. Hotspot 3 was probably associated with car parking along St Mungo's Avenue uh, with busy 60 space cul-de-sac car parks. The uh, lesser uh, NO2 areas may have been due to buildings which could have acted as windbreaks preventing the travel of NO2 but allowing BC to bounce around corners via resuspension. Finally, Hotspot 4 uh, was a BC rich feature in this sort of direction to the south of hotspot one. Uh, this may have been due to Buchanan bus station. 
the BC Rich character was likely as a result of high winds resuspending B uh, legacy BC deposits, uh, which may have overshadowed contemporary NO2 emissions. On the site walkover, the site was noted to be quite dusty in the middle of summer. So this brings me to the conclusions. The paper suggests that the ratio of pollutant concentrations between BC and oxides of nitrogen, in this case NO2, are highly useful for source identification studies. Conditional probability functions, CPF, also help create a clear understanding of the meteorological impact and underlying variability of the source. As Carr's law in papers in 2006 to 2019 focuses on the ratio of PM to oxide of nitrogen, the BC plot is perhaps even more useful, as high BC environments are likely to show combustion related emissions, both historically as resuspended hotspots and from soot rich contemporary sources. In contrast, nitrogen rich areas may show relatively recent combustion sources such as vehicular emissions. New and previously undiscovered sources of air pollution were identified at the well studied Glasgow High Street and Townhead monitoring stations. These sources of nitrogen supply at the High Street monitoring station involve the A8 High Street road junctions, car parking facilities, and the Well Park Brewery, previously unknown source of BC in the area. The Townhead monitoring station had similar sources of nitrogen-rich air from nearby roads, including the A804, North Hanover Street, St Mungo Avenue, and importantly, the Townhead Interchange, Junction 15 of the M8 motorway, uh, as well as um, BC-rich air from the Buchanan bus station. Before this work, it was conjectured that the Townhead interchange contributed air pollution to the monitoring station, but little evidence was presented showing the slinkage and the Buchanan bus station wasn't considered a uh, source of air pollution until this point. The methods used in this chapter could enhance source identification at air quality monitoring stations uh, wherever they may be where BC, nitrogen oxides, wind direction and wind speed are monitored at fine timescales, say in minutes or hours. Such methods are likely to benefit air pollution analysis as characteristic shape profiles are produced, which can represent air quality features, um, as well as wind direction analysis, so, which can be used in back trajectory work. However, to fully diagnose these features, they should be targeted in field-based air quality monitoring campaigns. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please not hesitate to get in touch during the question and answer session or email me at my email address below. Thank you. Goodbye.